We would like to welcome those of you here at the Sliman Theater, downtown New Iberia, to our foreman for candidates seeking the office of Mayor Pro Tem in the city of New Iberia. I am Lisa Lord, your moderator for tonight's forum. Tonight's forum is sponsored by the Greater Iberia Chamber of Commerce, the Daily Iberian, and Leadership Iberia. I, like my previous moderator, am, class, is, am part of the class of 18, this year's Leadership Iberia class. There are a few announcements before we begin this evening's program. Tonight's sponsors wish to remind you that the last day to register to vote for the November 8th election is October 11th. Early voting runs October 25th through November 1st, and election day is, of course, November 8th. And also, don't forget, the Chamber is posting all the forms tonight to their YouTube channel, youtube.com slash goodnewsiberia. Okay. At this time, I would like to introduce the candidates. All candidates in this race were invited to participate. Those in attendance tonight are Dan Doyle and David J. Merrill, Jr. Tonight's format, each candidate will have 90 seconds for an opening statement. We will then ask a series of questions, which each candidate will have 90 seconds to answer, unless otherwise noted. Each candidate has also been given two rebuttal cards that he can use to take 60 seconds to comment on something the other candidate said during their answer. Those candidates wishing to use a rebuttal card will hold up their card after the other candidate finishes his answers to that question. And when recognized, he will get one minute to offer their additional thoughts. However, candidates, you should be selective about when you use these cards, because once your rebuttal has been used, that's it. If you would like to use your rebuttal card, just hold it up so we can see it. Okay. And to assist the candidates in keeping time, we have a timekeeper and timing lights situated down front. Candidates, when your time begins, the green light will come on. You will have 15 seconds. When you have 15 seconds left, the yellow light will come on. And when your time is up, the red light will come on. At that time, you must finish your sentence. If that takes more than a few seconds, the buzzer will sound. <laughs> okay, due to the limits of time and to maintain a fair atmosphere, we ask that the audi audience hold all their applause or any comments, please. All of the, quest all of the questions tonight were predetermined. Questions were solicited from the public, and then an independent panel reviewed these questions and came up with those that are to be asked tonight. The panel members selecting questions for this forum were Jonathan Norris, Marty Harrell, Rachel Segura, Gary Colden, Russ Cantrell, Kevin Romero, Will Chapman, and Janet Falk. All questions have been kept in strict confidence, and no one except the panel members have seen them. At this time, we will start with opening statements. Earlier, we drew for the starting order, and we will start with David J. Merrill, Jr. That's me. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Each candidate, let's see. All right. You get 90 seconds to make an opening statement, Mr. Merrill. Okay. My name is David Merrill, David John Merrill, Jr., I am city councilman for District 4, and um, presently uh, has a neighborhood watch program that's going to actually be in the same building on Thursday, and I do it from 6 to 7. I also am a former business owner. I had Gentleman's Quarterly on Main Street, right down the street. I had it for four years, opened it in 2010, closed it uh, July 1st of 2014. I also am a newly elected member commissioned by the governor of Louisiana to the k and Human Service District Board, uh, recommended by Fred Mills. And uh, not married, divorced, have children, and I'm also assistant manager of GMC at in New Iberia at Muston Patu. Thank you. Mr. Doyle. Good, thank you. I want to thank the chamber for hosting this forum tonight, for the opportunity for everyone to meet and listen to what we have to say for the next election. I also want to thank Mr. Merrill. We served together for two terms, and it was a pleasure. Uh, I was born in New Iberia all my life, and I lived here and worked here. Uh, married to Gina Bernard uh, Doyle. We have four children, Allison, Jason, Brittany, and Ginger. I served 10 years as city councilman for District 6, 
and now I'm currently serving for three and a half years with uh, the mayor pro tem. Uh, I believe the experience of operating a business as I did and my family, we're on our third generation over 42 years in New Iberia. And I believe that's an accomplishment that's hard to do these days. And I think with this commitment to my business and my family, I can do more and bring more to the table to change this. I am confident that the new mayor, the new city council members, and the existing ones can get together and return New Iberia to where it was in the past. You know, um, with new leadership in the parish, uh, they got uh, new parish president, new uh, parish councilman. The communication and the compromise that could be done through the city and the parish, we can grow. And I believe with the three C's, communication, compromise, and consideration, we can bring New Iberia back to where it used to be. Thank you. Mr. Merrill, why yes. are you running? What are some specifics about you or your background that make you the best candidate for Mayor Pro Tem? Well, one thing, uh, piggybacking on Mr. Dahl said, I have the experience, it's been eight years. And before I got elected to the uh, mayor's you know, council, I was elected to the Civil Service Board in 2007, appointed by the mayor. Also, I have a good experience with dealing with people generally. I've been in the car business for 19 years. I've been in retail for 30 years. All I do is deal with the public daily. And I think I have a good attitude as far as making sure that they're taken care of and that I meet all the needs that they're looking forward to. Another thing, too, is I would like to see this town grow forward, and I think we can go forward if we're definitely promoted the right way. We're not promoted the right way. I know we have IDF. They do a good job. There's nothing taken away from them. But I look around and I see the existing communities around us, like Youngsville and Broussard, they are growing, and I can remember Youngsville used to be nothing but field, cane field, and also Broussard. So you tell me, they are doing something that we're not doing, and I know they are doing something we're not doing. Because when you got places that were occupied by sugar cane fields, and now you have prominent businesses, and people building schools and everything, and everybody want to leave from New Iberia and other places and move to Youngsville, it must be something that they're tapping into to promote that city to be able to do that. New Iberia has a lot to offer. We have a whole lot to offer. We have people come here in our main street on tour buses just to look at the uh, things that we have already accomplished as a city. I feel that with the experience I have in putting together the right people. Thank you. Mr. Doyle. Thank you. As I stated in my opening comments, 42 years of family business, third generation. And that means a lot to me when my children went to school all the time but came back here to want to live here and have a family. So if I don't get involved and stay involved, who will? And I believe with the new administration and the new elected officials, I have a lot to offer because it would be easy for us to pull out and go somewhere else. But I'm committed. I'm vested. My life's here. So this is the only direction I have to do is to help the city is to get involved and maybe make some changes and bring more children back, more kids back, more families back. New Iberia is a great place. Could it be greater? Yes. And it was at one time. But I believe with my education in business and running a business, and because we over 42 years, you have good days, bad days, good years, bad years. I believe I got enough education and, and experience to make a difference. Thank you. Mr. Merrill, what are the three biggest issues facing the city in the next four years, and what are your thoughts on each? I think uh, starting with uh, this year coming up, 2017, one of the biggest issues we're facing is our, our lack of uh, police department security in our town. We're in a bad way right now with the police department. Everyone knows what's going on with the sheriff department, and people are wondering, in my district and just in general, when I talk to people on a daily basis, they're wondering what are we going to do about the city of New Iberia. Everyone knows about it, not just in the local areas, but we are known about this outside of the states of New Iberia. I think one of the things is to try to see if we can work with whoever the new mayor is and administration to try to bring our police department back. It will be costly. I won't tell you that it won't be, but I can tell you one thing. If we can start it, eventually we can get it to the capacity that it needs to be. Another thing is really the promotion of promoting young people 
to stay in Newiberry by some of the things one of the other city councilmen talked about as far as dealing with the school board, as far as promoting jobs for children that's not college degree children and working with them to be able to stay here by promoting jobs through the college and making sure that they can be here and help promote this city. Another thing I'd like to see is us mentor our own kids and people in our community. I mentor kids in the community and I think we need to work with one another to be able to do that. Thank you. Mr. Doyle? Well, the, of course, public safety, tax revenue, and new businesses. And, um, you know, in New Iberia, we do live in the city, but we pay parish tax. I never understood why we can't do more and more with the city and the parish to grow the infrastructure. Because without infrastructure, you can't grow business. And we need to, when a business comes to New Iberia, we need to say, what can we do for you? Not what you need to do for us. And take them by the hand and do what you have to do to make them stay here. And to help them. You know, the permits are not a big uh, income or for our city. So what, that, what we need to do to get these businesses to stay here, then they'll bring their families. But it's working together with the parish to get the infrastructure that we need. Everyone wants to bring business to New Iberia, but how do you bring it when you don't have the infrastructure to handle the business? So I think the infrastructure is something you don't see, you don't feel, you, you can't, it don't feel good, but you need it. And that's the most important, just like the foundation of a house. You have the right foundation, you can't grow. So I really believe that's a, the main thing we need to do. And at that point, the revenue will start coming in. The taxes will start increasing. But until that, we cannot raise taxes. We cannot continue on a path. We need to change the path and go into a different direction to make New Iberia grow. Thank you. All right. Mr. Doyle, we continue to hear complaints about the city's building permit and inspection process, that it is more complicated, less friendly, more difficult to manage than similar processes in neighboring communities. If you think that's not a fair assessment of the city's efforts, why not? If you agree there are problems in this area for the city, what are they and what would you propose to improve the perception of New Iberia's permit and inspection operation? Well, you know, uh, the business I'm in, I use the inspection department um, on a regular basis. And the inspection department is really to protect the citizens of the city. It's not just to collect a fee. It's something that we have to do. And now since FEMA made new regulations, if we don't go through with the same regulations and mandate what they told us we need to, we can lose funding in the future. But the thing is, is the permit department is, is something to protect all citizens. But when a business comes into the city, I think there's some changes. I think we can take a little more effort. Our permit department is very overworked right now because of the income that we're not getting through the taxes. So it's hard to, to spend a lot of time, but we need to make an effort. It's that important for us to have a permit department that someone can give PR. I know in some cities, if a business comes to New Iberia, the mayor or the parish president or whatever is there to help the process. And it's the process is the problem, not really the department. And there's certain things by law we have to do. It's not something that we mandated at the city or the city council. It's something that's done through the state or through the feds. So it has to be there because if we don't have this permit department, <coughs> now, is there opportunity for the city and the parish to have one to be on the same team and the same? Yes, there is. I'm very open to that. Thank you. Mr. Merrill? Yes. Um one thing I look at too is our permits department is important and there's rules and regulations as far as how you're looking at permits when people come into the city. But I have myself spoken to a lot of gentlemen that has friends of theirs that tried to come into our city and didn't feel comfortable with coming here to try to open their business because they didn't feel that we were helping them to look at it as a positive thing, uh, just going straight to the things that we need to do and the things that they need. Understand me, I know there are rules or regulations along with our permits department that have to be followed. But I think that if someone comes here to open a business, you should look at them and look at them for who they are and look at the fact that they do want to come here and open a business and work with them on a process of saying, whatever you need to do, let's start with one thing first. And as the process goes along, we'll work with you to finalize what you want to do to open your business in town. And another thing too is, with the revenues and, and everything being down, I'm not looking at consolidating that department. 
I, I really don't think we need to do that because the apartment has already been windowed down to a little bit of nothing anyway with all the changes we made in, with taxes and cutting people's employment and, and things like that. But I really think that what we need to do is look at an effective way to look at trying to make people stay here and want to build here when they come here. Thank you. All right, Mr. Doyle, you get three minutes to, res to respond to this question. What's your position on law enforcement for the city? Do you favor bringing back a city police force? And if so, where does the startup money come from? Where do you find enough officers to operate it? And what are your thoughts about the cost of operations versus the contract with the sheriff's office? If you favor continuing some sort of contract with the Iberia Parish Sheriff's Office to provide law enforcement services to the city, what are your thoughts about addressing perceived shortcomings with the current arrangement? And what are your thoughts about likely continuing cost increase increases with this arrangement? Uh, you know, the first thing is the safety of the citizens of the city of Iberia. Uh, I was on a council in 2003 when this consolidation or this contract happened. And the reason it happened, of course, what we're talking about today, dollars and cents. The police department and the fire department in New Iberia is civil service. And a lot of civil service has mandates from the state that we have to abide by if you can afford it or not. So we were running those departments, the police department was running sometimes $350,000, $400,000 a year more to continue it. We were running out of funds. Same situation with the fire department. The fire department went out and passed the tax to get income to continue to run the department. The police department did not or thought they could not, I don't know. So what happened, we had to make a decision because we couldn't afford it. So when we went back and got the contract with the uh, sheriff department, at that point it saved the city about $1.3 million. But it was the mandates that made us get to that point. It wasn't the people, it wasn't personalities, it was the mandates of the dollars. When you have to increase a department three hundred fifty to four hundred fifty thousand dollars a year every year and it continues to grow, we have an issue there. You know, right now, I'll give you an example, in two thousand and three, um, we had to do retirement for the police department, it was about eleven percent. Right now it's about thirty percent. Same as health insurance. It's about 95% increase than it was in 2003. Same thing with liability insurance, up 107%. So where do we pay for it? That was always the issue. And, and you know, being responsible as tax dollars, we had to do something. Like even the salaries are up like 35% now since 2003. It was always a money issue. It was nothing but that, but we had to be accountable. So. We did what we thought at that time to keep the city going. Now, it's all about funding. If there's a funding method that can bring the dollars to, for a department, great. But when you're mandated from the state to do things that you don't have the money to pay for, you have no other resource but to try to find a cheaper or less expensive way to get the same job done. So I was there, and it wasn't an easy thing. But if not, the city wouldn't have made it this far. Is there changes can be? Don't go on right, they should be. But contracts is about communication. And I don't care if it's a garbage contract, if it's a sheriff's contract, what kind of contract, you need to communicate and compromise and change things along the way, because things change. New Iberia today is not the same it was in 2003. Crime is not the same. Things change, but nothing in the contract changed. So that could be part of the problem. And that is very important, but it needs to be looked at because it's the most expensive department in the city. Not only now, it was in 2003, and that will not go away. Thank you. Mr. Merrill? Yes. Uh, talking about the police department, I wasn't on the council at the time when those changes were made, but I think that um, that was the wrong thing for us to do. Um, Mr. Doyle, I know you voted on, you know, to get rid of the police department. And I know they had some other people that weren't against getting rid of the police department. One thing about the police department, and I want everyone in here to understand, the sheriff's department, we pay him a contract. We talk about working with the sheriff's department, and I heard some of the other councils talk about working with the sheriff's department. But if you have a appointed position, like a chief of police, they fall underneath the mayor and the city council. Do you guys understand that? If you have a chief of police, they fall underneath the mayor and the city council. 
So it's a lot easier to work with them and to be able to have some control. Right now I have people that came to me and also some of the other councilmen who want to know why y'all can't get rid of the sheriff. All this stuff we're going through. The city is in a bad way. You have no narcotics on the street. Different things like that. That's part of the reason why a lot of other departments in the United States haven't got rid of the police department. Because what is the use of having a mayor that's running the city if the mayor has no control over the policing of the city? And I think we can bring the police department back. Will it be easy? No. But it will be a general process working along with whoever the mayor is and we can look at it and we can look at letting the sheriff department provide some of the services while we look at another alternative to see where we would be at budget-wise to bring the police department back. Thank you. Mr. Merrill, what are some of the specific things the city can do to promote economic development, to encourage the establishment of new businesses or industries, or to promote residential housing development? I think one of the things we can do is look at uh, some of the uh, adjudicated property that we do have that we are trying to sell. and. Uh, See, we can get it where some people might want to buy it to either put some type of business there or, or small business there or, or something there where we can bring some revenues in the city just for that part. As far as jobs and everything like that and bringing the businesses in, we need to be able to promote our city to the point to where as we can get other businesses to come in here. Also looking at infrastructure. One thing Mr. Dahl said, infrastructure is going to bring new business in here. But new business is not going to come in here if we don't give them some infrastructure and make it more, you know, obtainable for them to look at coming into New Iberia. And another thing, too, is we need to promote our, our, our city where we can bring some recreation in here. I've been knocking on doors for over five and a half months. And one thing that I hear a lot of people say is we have no recreation here for our kids. I have a grandson. I have to get in my car and I have to go to a Court Ranch or Chuck E. Cheese in Lafayette. We need to look at someone while we promote this, and we can do it. Because if they can get people to come into the Lafayette and the Youngsville area to bring in stuff like that that we got to get in our car to go do, why can't we do it here? Mr. Doyle? Okay. You know, you don't get a second chance for your first impression. And I think that's a problem that we have in the city. We all going to disagree sometimes, just like the parish. And a statement was made earlier. How many times the parish came to the city council to ask to do something and we never could come to terms. Don't go to my turf. This is my city. This is your parish. That needs a change. Because, you know, we need to get together before and disagree before it gets to the public or agree. The main thing people don't like is an argument. I don't care if it's in a, in a house, in a business, they don't like arguing. And the city has been doing that for years through the news. And it's bad. Because right now, you've got businesses that want to come in the city. They're trying to take them in the parish. The parish is trying to take the ones from the city. Really, we're all the same community. The tax dollars will come to the city because that's where the infrastructure and the stores and things are. But we cannot have that disagreement. We need to work together. And, and that's one thing that can solve a lot of our problems is working together and compromising. Because when you do that, people like to come to a city that's fun, a city that's good. Look at St. Martinville. My goodness, they are growing and growing because they're working together. You don't see many negative things happen in St. Martinville because they take care of their business first. And I think that's what we need to do. Thank you. Mr. Doyle, we hear a lot of talk about homeowners and businesses leaving New Iberia to relocate to new nearby communities where it is said there are more housing options, more opportunities for a local business to grow and prosper. As Mayor Pro Tem, you are often the voice of the city. What would you say are the positive attributes New Iberia has right now, and why should locals stay or outsiders locate here? And what can the city do, what should the city do to improve people's perceptions about New Iberia? Uh, you know, I had the opportunity um, a couple years ago for the. Uh, um, Gumbo Cook-Off to take some people to um, do some, some stuff for the, uh, from out of town. And they wanted to know how much I would charge for them to do that. I said, there's no charge. Could you promote New Iberia? They were unbelievable surprised how the people in New Iberia were so nice, so open to promote their own town. So people, when they come to New Iberia, they love New Iberia. 
But the thing is, what can you do to make them stay in New Iberia? And you can't blame a business for not staying here if they're not making money. They're not doing it for fun. They got bills to pay. But the thing is, I've been in business 30-something years. I love New Iberia. That's why I'm here. My family's here. But what has New Iberia done for the local businesses that have been here sticking it out? Nothing. That's what needs to be changed. We not need to only bring people in and help them get in. We need to take care of the local people that's here, that pay their dues, the citizens that worked here, that retired. And, and you have to start in your home before you bring other people in. You can't give away the farm to people that's coming in and not take care of the people that's here. So I believe there's a lot of opportunities here, but the thing is, is infrastructure. You listen, I mean, not to bring up the parish, they haven't, businesses want to come in, they don't have the infrastructure. We need to expend money on infrastructure to bring people in. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Merrill. Um, a lot of what I said earlier goes back to, you know, promoting the city right to try to bring businesses in and everything like that too. But we do have to work with the parish and I think that on some levels, the parish and the school board, they both have budgets. And I think if we work with the parish and the school board, we can work together to try to promote the city in the right way to bring different businesses in that's gonna help all of us with all our budgets that we're dealing with. The school board has money with their budget. They've done a lot of things in New Iberia. They've, they've had new football fields done. And I'm saying those things were things that, that's gonna help us in a lot of ways, instead of us just going to see football games at one field. That's just a small example of some of the things that we can accomplish if we work together and have the parish and the school board. We all need to be an entity that works together. You know, the parish and the city of New Iberia both have a budget. And it's ridiculous when you can see we're not growing. And when I came on the council eight years ago, this is how the council in the parish was. This is how it was. For a long time, the parish was fighting against the city, the city fighting against the parish. How are we gonna grow when you have a budget here and you have a budget here, but nobody's working together to pool together to make our city grow? We need to, we need to work with one another. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Merrill, tell us what you think the city's financial situation will be for the next four years. Where might expense reductions be made? What are possible areas to increase revenues? Please try to offer some specifics. For example, if you think that the city can get grants for certain efforts, can you offer some specifics on what sort of grants these might be? Well, we can look at grants, but everybody know the state and where we're at right now with the state. The state is in a deficit right now with the flooding that happened with Louisiana. That's setting us back a little bit further also because the federal government is not giving us everything we need. But I can tell you one thing too, we can look at our revenues increasing in 2017 and it's because of the new neighborhood Walmart that's going to be on the other side of town. In my district on Lewis Street, we have other businesses coming in. Uh, Smoothie King's supposed to be coming in. We do have um, also on Atmodal where we sold the property. They're getting ready to build a facility there that's going to have at least three or four extra buildings that somebody can put a business in. You have uh, Community First Bank. They moved in right up there on the corner of Lewis Street and uh, Atmodal. They have you know, room at the top where they can rent out some of, that, some of that facilities. I think eventually, coming into 2017, we should see going into 2017, close to the end, our revenues come up a little bit better. And I think by promoting the city in the right way and, and trying to see if we can get somebody that's interested in coming in, I think myself, I would be ready to get on a plane and uh, me or whoever the mayor is at the time, if somebody's interested in us and they, they say it online, I'm ready to get on the plane and go see if we can finalize the deal. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Doyle? We need to do some change of the way business has been done. You know, um, everything goes up, but things don't change in the way to bring money in. You know, we have a budget that we adopt for a year. We don't make changes to in a desperate mode, or we find extra money, or we have to do it. It needs to be looked at more on a regular basis. We have health insurance for the city of New Iberia is running as $115,000 a month. That didn't happen overnight. It happens every day. And that's why you need to change with the times. We had a contract, I was not on a council then, but to pick up garbage, that if we would have went with the parish, we would have saved a million dollars a year. But no, 
because we want our city. That needs to change. I keep saying it. I've been in business uh, 40 something years. I changed. You have to change for the times. And I think people in office need to make the changes, not, not to make the changes because they want to get reelected. Make the changes because you have to change. But our ticket to this is communication and working together. We, we, look, we have a great town here. Our taxes will not just go up because we keep saying it's great. This could go up and we need to make a change that will bring people in, but lower the expense of operation. It's easy to do. We do it in business every day. We can't continue the same old, same old cost of doing business in New Iberia and just worry about getting reelected. Thank you. Mr. Doyle, the recent flooding in the city, the parish, and around South Louisiana has lots of residents concerned about drainage issues. Sure, the recent flooding was caused by what is being called a thousand year storm but we do see Main Street, Jefferson Terrace, and plenty of other streets covered by water after more routine heavy rains. What are some specifics the city should do to address drainage? Well, you know, we think New Iberia, uh, we drain New Iberia, but most of the drainage goes to the parish. Some of it goes to the bayou. But we need to work with the parish. When we have, a, say, a 20-inch line going to the parish line and they have an 18 inch line or a 16 inch line we cannot drain that's about working together again and now what's happening our neighbor people the st martinville people are starting to build bill some of their waters are coming in our direction so they are they are growing and we're sinking but drain is changing in this town you know everybody wants um, growth and when we do growth you have more cement less drainage what happens? It can't handle the water. And that's what's happening in this town. We are so happy to have growth, but we're not addressing the drainage for the growth. And the only way you can do that is, and we do have a master plan, but why have a master plan when you don't use it? We have to drain somewhere. So we can't keep the water here. And guess what? Back again, talking about our very parish, working together where our drainage can go through their ditches to make sure it's large enough. And that's one thing we, we are facing here. I'm finding the, the older we, I get, the drainage is less. You know why? Because it's growth, less cane fields, less areas for water to go. And there has to be a communication in, through the city and the parish on a drainage system. Thank you. Mr. Merrill. Yes, I think with the drainage we have, um, besides the parish, working with the parish, we need to work with DOTD. We have areas like Hopkins Street and a lot of other areas that go straight out to the highway. DOTD is part of us working with the drainage and getting that taken care of. We also have in the city, we spoke about this a long time ago on the council. You have, we have a drainage program that we started. We're in the process of trying to break up some streets in New Iberia and we have done some streets already. A lot of the pipes that's under the ground in a lot of areas in New Iberia is very small pipe. And when they did this, the city of New Iberia was very small at the time. The pipe's never been changed underneath the city to be able to accommodate the growth of the city. But you have about 32 or 33,000 people in the city of New Iberia. We need to be able to continue the drainage program with the funding we can get to break up some of the streets and, in, and incorporate some bigger pipe underneath the ground. Also working with the parish on some intergovernmental agreements with some of the areas that's outside as far as cleaning some of these ditches and stuff that's outside of the parish, working with us on that, and also DOTD with some of the funding to help us to uh, work and get our sewage together. All right. Okay, I believe this will be our last question. Um, Mr. Doyle, here's your chance to speak on some issues that have not been raised tonight. Anything that you want to address or a chance to offer more comments about an issue that you think deserves more attention? Well, you know, the, the only thing I can say is just don't give up on New Iberia. We, we will uh, get out of the situation we're in and we'll get better. But it's going to take a little bit help from everybody, from the employees, from elected officials, for the citizens. And it's, you know, running a business as long as uh, our family did, you have to make changes. And sometimes change is not good or don't feel good, but is needed. And I think that's what we need to do in New Iberia. Think a little differently and make some changes that might hurt for a little while. But at the end of the day, it will benefit everybody, not just a select group. Thank you. Mr. Merrill? Yes. Um, 
I think what we need to do is, is get the citizens to work with us as well as, you know, forming some type of committee. We want to hear what the citizens have to say. You know, at my neighborhood watch meeting that I give, from time to time, you know, I ask the citizens what they think they ought to see. I have a lot of people in here that comes to my meeting, and they've heard me ask that question. You know, even though we're the people that's running the city as far as council people, mayor pro temp and mayor, you know, we have ideas, but it'd be best to get a lot of ideas from you guys. You guys are the, are the people that's in New Iberia. You guys have concerns and everything as well. I think we ought to form some type of committee to get the people in New Iberia involved also so we can all be on the same page about what we can do to grow our city. Another thing too is education. We have a lot of people that's coming here that's getting out of school. Some of them don't have college degrees. You know, a while back I had someone came um, last year to the council from the school board to give a presentation on a program that's implicated right now in the school where they can take a career and it could be implicating them going to ULCC and possibly you know, having a career and getting a job. Everybody's not a college degree student. We need to be able to promote our young people that do want to stay here, that don't have college degrees, by helping them to get other trades and everything so they can be able to make a living in this community. Thank you. All righty. Well, thank you, gentlemen. This concludes tonight's forum for the Mayor Pro Tem of the City of New Iberia. We invite you to stay for the Mayor's Forum, which is up next at 8.15. Um, thank you.